Look, it's you. <sighs> Fuck you too. What is up everybody, I'm hoping you're all well back once again with another movie review and it is the ninth entry into the Saw franchise. Nine movies into this franchise. Wow. How time flies when you're having fun. But with a lot of sort of entries being very hit and miss, where does this fit on the scale? Well, as always, that's what we're here to talk about. So, without any further delay, let's talk about it. Spiral, or Spiral from the Book of Saw, whatever name they're going with. Saw 9. So Spiral, as I mentioned, is the ninth entry into the Saw franchise from the mind of legendary comedian Chris Rock, who's a huge fan of the Saw franchise from what I'm aware, who went into producers, said, I've got an idea for a Saw movie, passed them the script and they said, Okay, and here we are. And without going into the plot details a little bit too much, because I know there's a lot of secrecy around this film, they don't really want to give away if it is a genuine sequel, if it is part of a spin-off, if it's in its own sort of universe. So all I'll say about it is that it follows Chris Rock as a detective, as a new Jigsaw-style copycat killer is coming around, causing some more murders. However, they seem to be targeting specific police in the department. And so it's down to Chris Rock to piece all these things together by the clues that are specifically being left for him to find out who's doing this. And that's all I can really say without giving too much away. I am trying to be very secretive about this movie and to be honest the Saw franchise as a whole is a franchise I really enjoy especially around Halloween time I can binge the entire thing I just find them very entertaining and if you ever go into a Saw movie you know what to expect you're there for gruesome sort of traps character development isn't necessarily always a main thing it's just there for the gore so going into this movie while I was expecting something a little bit different I wasn't getting my hopes up too much because again it's a Saw film. I just wanted to see blood and gore and the usual sort of shit that I see in a Saw movie. Having said that, I have to say I admire what they tried to do with this movie. They did try to make it a more character-driven piece. Chris Rock's character is very well fleshed out. He has a lot of issues. He's got a lot riding on his back. His character has a clear set of rules and morals that he follows and in that it has made him enemies in the department. As for Chris Rock's performance in this movie, I thought he was fantastic in this role. Obviously, he got a lot of the comedic elements out of his character as well, but definitely added some comedic moments in the movie. However, I feel they could have done more with him had they actually taken the time time to flesh his character out more, had time for him to process certain things, I feel like we could have cared about him a lot more as a character. He also has a shaky relationship with his father, played by Samuel L. Jackson, who of course is just fantastic in anything he's in, it's Samuel L. Jackson. No matter what movie that guy is in, he will nail it every time. He will really work with any material that he is given and elevate it to a whole new level. But to be fair, the material he's been given isn't necessarily terrible in this movie. I actually really enjoyed a lot of the character work in this film. There are a lot of background characters that you don't really care too much about and some characters are forgotten about here and there. But the main characters that you do focus on, primarily Chris Rock's character, are fleshed out enough to the point where you can actually care enough about them when things do go down. Not so much that when they're in the trap you want to see them escape because, you know, you want to see the gore, you want to see death, that's what you come to a Saw movie for. Or at least I do anyway. That kind of says a lot about me. However, while it was trying to be this very in-depth character piece around Chris Rock's character and the things that he's going through, it also had to be a Saw movie, which is obviously what it is. And as we know about all the Saw movies, they move along at quite a quick pace, and in that, this movie does exactly the same, but that's where it kind of falls into the loop of failing to be a character-driven piece. We are never given enough time to have these characters just sit down and process things. The passage of time in this movie is never really clear. Things happen and it kind of feels like it should be a couple of days, if not weeks into the future, but it turns out it's been a few hours or even just a day, like the next day. And the only indication we really get to this is just characters really changing their clothes. So as much as we don't get that time to really sit down and flesh out these characters to the point where we can really fully care about them and develop them as like real people, grounded people in this universe and the passage of time not being all that clear it does really lose out on that effect of trying to be that character driven piece that I feel it was trying to go for but because it was also trying to be that it didn't push for sort elements that it should have been pushing originally which is of course the gore the aspects of traps now don't get me wrong there are traps in this movie and they are very innovative they're very inventive and all of the most about these traps they're not necessarily so extravagant and over the top like you'd expect John Kramer to be I mean that's not necessarily a spoiler because they have explicitly said John Kramer is dead in this universe and that's been a thing for the franchise for years they're not going to go back on that they're not going to magically resurrect him because that'd be very weird so it does feel very much like a copycat killer trying to emulate john kramer's old designs whilst also bringing his own sort of personal take to them and so the traps while pretty basic when compared to previous traps that you may have seen were a lot of fun to see they felt brutal they felt real but you also didn't lose that aspect of these guys could genuinely escape if they really tried to fight for their lives as much as they should having said that the reveal for who the main killer is 
is made very clear at a certain point in the movie. At least for me anyway, or for people who see movies a lot like myself, they'll be able to pick up on the clues or even just a particular scene which really nailed it in the head for me. Where I was like, okay, so it's gonna be this person and that's exactly who it was. When you see movies as much as I have, that may become very easy to spot. However, for casual moviegoers who are just going to turn their brains off and have a good time, it may not be as clear. But I won't say any more than that just because I don't want to spoil the movie for anyone who does want to go and see this film. If you are a fan of the Saw franchise, I recommend checking it out. I think it's very well directed. It's directed by the same guy who directed the previous from four to seven. I don't think he directed Jigsaw. I can't actually remember which ones he directed. He's directed parts in the franchise before. And personally, I think he's improved on his directing style. While they brought that, that very quick cut sort of pacing when it comes to jumping around all over the place when they're in the trap. The sort of style that they had in the original movies that we took out for the Jigsaw film. Personally, a style that I didn't really mind. I thought it added to the tension and that sort of frantic energy of like, holy shit, these guys are in this trap and that's what they're, that's probably what's going through their mind. But in the scenes where the camera does have time to follow the characters around, I feel like he has improved on his directing style. Having said that, I do feel there were a lot of editing moments in this movie that didn't necessarily work. I thought the editing was very choppy. I don't 100% know if that is on the director or if that's purely on the editor or if it's on both their parts. I'm not 100% sure, but I thought the editing was very choppy, especially towards the ending, something happens that I didn't necessarily like. And again, I can't go into details due to spoilers, but I, d I didn't like the way it went down with a particular character. Having said all that though, I don't think this movie is necessarily bad. It's definitely not the worst Saw movie in the franchise. I certainly had a good time with it. If you are a fan of the Saw franchise, I feel like you'll have a good time with it as well. I can recommend going to see it. If you're not a fan of the Saw movies, you probably won't like this film. Those are really my only issues with the film. As I said, it's not a bad movie. And so for all those reasons, I'm going to give Spiral from the Book of Saw three stars. So, Spiral from the Book of Saw. Have you guys seen it yet? What did you guys think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, then subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks again for watching. You guys are awesome. And I will see you all in the next video.